I grew up in a small town in southern Illinois. It was just across the river from St. Louis, which was really great because it was rural, but yet near a city. So I had the best of both worlds. And I got the bug to be an astronaut somewhere in middle school. And it's funny because I don't exactly remember the, the exact time. And they asked me during the interview, it's like, I don't know, sometime in middle school. And so what happened? I kind, I've always, I had always been curious about the world. I, I drove my parents nuts asking why this, why that? They bought me a book, 200 Questions Why, to get me to shut up, which didn't work. But it was really a great book because it answered some of my questions. So I was always having this natural curiosity about the world around me and I had an affinity for math. So it was clear to me I was going to go into science. And then I, asked, I latched onto the whole idea of becoming an astronaut. And, you know, that's really all she wrote. So I didn't know anything. The interesting thing is I didn't know anything about engineering when I was a young girl. I knew, I knew science, but I knew physics, I knew chemistry, I knew biology, because those were the three classes that were offered at my high school. But I didn't know anything about engineering. So I never imagined that I would get to NASA as an engineer. I imagined and I planned that I would get to NASA as a physicist because that was my love, physics. You know, I, Biology was interesting, chemistry was interesting, but I really liked physics because it was the place to go to find out why. It's the fundamentals of everything. And so I went to college. At, um, it's called the Missouri University of Science and Technology uh, in, in Missouri. U of I was way too big for me. U of I was the same size as my hometown. It's like, oh, I can't go there. It's way too big for me. Uh, Missouri Rala. Missouri S&T was a smaller school, and it was a science and engineering school. Well, I get there, and it's like, oh, there's this thing called engineering. That's really cool. I can take the physics, and I can do something with it. And so that's how I ended up getting interested in engineering as well. I still love physics, and I finished my degree in physics, and then I went out and got a job and did my master's in electrical engineering because I was enjoying the chance to take the physics and apply it and do something with it. In my case, we were... Do, we were um, hiding airplanes from radar, you know, and that was kind of cool. And so that was working there for a while. And then I started getting interested in materials because everything that you do with, everything that materials do defines how you build an airplane or how you really build anything. I mean, there's materials all around us and their properties define what they can do and what we can do with them. And that goes back to physics and using physics to engineer materials. So that's why I ended up getting my PhD at Georgia Tech in materials because that was fascinating because, again, it's taking the physics and it's applying it. And so that's how I got to NASA, basically. I just wandered around, followed my interests, and applied. And the funny thing is I, I went through a path that I never could have imagined as a high school student because I didn't even know these fields existed. And so it just goes to show that it's good to have a plan, but it's good to be flexible because you don't know what you don't know when you're making your plan. So if you keep your end goal in sight and follow your interests as you're learning about what's interesting to you, you can get wherever you're trying to go. And I think that's a, that's very important. And then, you know, as, as a, as a female, you know, we're, there's still, I think, unfortunately, uh, this idea that, you know, females aren't good in science or, aren't, or, or they shouldn't do math and or engineering. And, and I just, I just have to laugh. I just have to laugh. I mean, I've been very successful as, as a female engineer scientist and it's fun. Um, the idea that you can, uh, take some knowledge and apply it to make the world a better place is a very powerful one. And I think that does attract a lot of women. You know, that's something that I think motivates a lot of, of people, women in particular. And I think that's why you see a lot of women going into bioengineering and environmental science and things like this. What I would argue, you can still have that same kind of impact in the hard sciences, in the aerospace engineering fields, mechanical engineering field, electrical engineering field, and materials and things like that. But it's just a little bit different impact on society. And so uh, there's a broad array of things that you can do as a scientist and engineer to make the world a better place. And I would argue that if you're a young person, male or female, and you have an interest in trying to make the world a better place, that you look at engineering as a methodology to do that, it not just, um, you know, certainly teaching is a valuable skill, medical field's a valuable skill, but engineering is a valuable skill set for that as well. And if you look at all the things that come out of, say, NASA, NASA, all of the technology that NASA develops to do the things that it does so well, flying people in space, the aeronautics research, the planetary science, all of that technology spins off into society. And people don't even realize that when they pick up their smartphone or they put on their UV-coated sunglasses, they're using technology that came from the aerospace industry and NASA. And so we are making the world a better place. We are helping society, but it's not something that is obvious because it takes time for this technology to evolve and devolve 
and reintroduce itself in other ways into the world around us. So I would just like to leave you with that thought. And if you have any other further questions or comments, you can reach me uh, through NASA. They'll have a way of, of getting those to me. And I encourage you to, to pass along any questions.